Hi, I'm Jim Covington. I'd like to welcome you to this week's issue of ISBA State House Review. Today is August 6, 2014. I have four bills I'd like to talk to you about. Uh, the governor has, you know, got about another three weeks to deal with a couple hundred bills that have been sent to him. Uh, by that time, a couple of weeks, uh, the drop dates will all be have occurred, where he has uh, got to take some kind of action, or a bill will become law. Uh, there's four bills that have been uh, he has signed into law that I'd like to talk to you about. The first one is Public Act 98-853. Uh, it affects independent examination and mental health proceedings, and it kind of fleshes out how a respondent gets an independent medical examination in three kind of proceedings under the uh, Mental Health Code, uh, proceedings seeking involuntary admission, a proceeding seeking to administer psychotropic medication or electroconvulsive therapy, or a proceeding to seeking discharge of the respondent. It requires the court to determine the fees of the expert, uh, which are to be paid by the respondent's county of residence. If the respondent is not a resident of Illinois, the fees are to be paid by the county in which the proceeding is pending. That will take effect on January 1, 2015. I believe that kind of codifies existing law, but it's just not been clear, and it's in like two different cases, so this is setting it clearly out in the statute. The next one is uh, Public Act-98-821. It amends the Illinois Transfer on Death Instrument Act. It's introduced by Senator Jason Barrickman of uh, Bloomington Normal and uh, uh, Representative L.G. Sims of Chicago. And it makes several cleanup uh, tweaking amendments to the Illinois Transfer on Death Instrument Act. Uh, it makes a recording of a notice of death affidavit a permissive action. Uh, that can be taken by the beneficiary, but is not mandatory uh, to, to keep good title. Uh, it allows a bona fide purchaser for value and without notice before the recordation of a list pendants notice for an action to set aside or contest the transfer on death instrument to take free and clear of any such action or contest. Uh, it clarifies that the acceptance of a toady by the, by the beneficiary during the owner's lifetime is not a requirement. Uh, and it eliminates the uh, right of an agent acting under a durable power of attorney from creating or revoking a toady, but it doesn't affect uh, the agent's right or power to sell, transfer, or encumber the residential real estate, um, if so authorized under the power of attorney. Basically, all of these changes were uh, tweaking changes that have been two to three years in the mix after the uh, Toady Act was passed several years ago. Many of them were requested by the title insurance companies so they could make sure they did uh, the right thing on clear title. That takes effect on January 1, 2015. The next bill is uh, Public Act 98-842, introduced by Senator Bill Hain of Alton uh, and Representative Renee Kosel of Mokina and amends the Community Common Interest Community Association Act, uh, and it allows an association to waive the current statutory requirement in its community interest instruments that a leasing unit owner must deliver a copy of the lease to the association. That will take effect on January 1, 2015. Uh, if you look at the General Assembly's uh, excellent website, which is ilga.gov, that's ilga.gov, if you look at the uh, last paragraph or last line of the text, uh, it will say in there if it's uh, got an immediate effective date or a specific effective date. If it doesn't say anything, uh, typically that means it will be effective on January 1 uh, of the next year, which would be 2015. If you go to the bill text or summary, uh, the, the Legislative Reference Bureau always puts in there what is the effective date, and you can see that. The uh, final bill I'd like to talk about is going to take effect, uh, has taken effect on July 16. It's one I kind of slipped by me in reporting to you, which I apologize for. It amends the Mechanics Lien Act. It's a Public Act 98-764, introduced by Senator John Mulrow of Chicago and Representative Kelly Burke of uh, Oak Lawn. And it provides that language barring certain agreements does not prohibit an agreement to subordinate a mechanics lien to a mortgage lien that secures a construction loan if that agreement is made more than 50% of the loan, after more than 50% of the loan has been disbursed to fund improvements to the, to the property. And it allows contractual provisions to be binding between the owner and contractor or a contractor and a subcontractor that no lien 
or claim may be filed or maintained or that a contractor's lien must be subordinated to the interest of any other party as long as it is not otherwise prohibited by this act. And that takes effect on July, has taken effect on July 16. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next week.